Let's do a problem that's like a lot of the chapter 2.2 homework problems. Uh, in those, we're not given a formula for a function or a graph. The only thing we're given is information about the function value at a point and the derivative of the function at the point, that uh, the value of the derivative at that point. Uh, we're often also not given units, so we're kind of op operating in an abstract math kind of sense here. And then it'll ask us, what's the value of the function at some other point? which is kind of a big ask. We have no idea how that function behaves out beyond that point, mostly. Um, so really what we're asking is, what's our best estimate of the function at x equals 5, knowing what we know about the function's behavior at x equals 3? So it seems like there's not much we can do, right? Um, do we have any way of predicting what that value is going to be? Well, we do have something called the calculus prediction equation. Um, I keep saying it's the calculus prediction equation because in stats we use other prediction equations, uh, trend lines basically. Um, so we've said um, the calculus prediction equation is nu equals current plus rate of change times the change in time, or delta x you could say. Another way of thinking of it is a tangent line, or a best local linear approximation. Um, so let's write the generic form of the tangent line. It's L of x equals, try to write it yourself here before you watch me write it, 3, 2, 1, pause. Okay, welcome back from pause. It's f of c plus f prime at c times x minus c. Um, what is c here? Well, c is kind of where we're centered or where we know things about what's going on. Uh, so that would be an x value of 3. So let's specialize it to 3. Um, so we'll say L of x. So try to rewrite this specialized to c equals 3. So it'd be f of 3 plus f prime at, uh, at 3 times x minus 3. And then let's specialize it to what we know. We know f of 3 is 57. We know f prime of 3 is negative 0 0.8. All right, and then we want to know about 5. So we want f of 5. Let's try L of 5 because the tangent line should be pretty close to the function uh, as long as we're not too far away from our central point. So we'd say L of 5 is 57 plus negative 0 0.8. So now I'm plugging in 5 for x. So I'm plugging in 5 for the x here. And I know how, you know how to plug in 5 for x. But it's complicated and lots of people get confused because we also have c going on. So I've been very careful here to keep the distinction between c and x. First I say what c is, and then I can plug in some other value like 5 for x. All right, I hardly ever do arithmetic in public, but in this case, I'll do that. Uh, remember, I can't combine these two because order of operations says I have to do the multiplication first. So a lot of people mess that up, so I'm making a point about it. And then this is 57 plus negative uh, 1.6. So we get 55.4. And can we say that's f of 5? No, not equal necessarily. We'd say that is maybe approximately equal to f of 5. Maybe we're just very good guessers and that's exactly f of 5, but it's uh, it's only approximate. It is the tangent line. So it's a good idea to draw what's going on, going on here. So we'll say here's 3 and here's 5. Here's 57. So I know I'm at that point. And I know the current slope is negative 0.8. So that's kind of all I know to begin with. 
and then I extend out the tangent line and get a value here which was 55.4 and that doesn't mean the function is going through there we could say if, is, can we just draw any random curve that goes through this point for the function not really it has to be a curve that has a slope uh, that matches the tangent line at that point so it could be a function that does this let's use another color here could be a function that does that as long as its slope there is um, is negative 0.8 it matches what we know and we're we're seeing that the function doesn't have to be exactly equal to the tangent line it's usually not but it, the tangent line is a better guess than anything else we can do given the information that we were given so we could say l of x equals f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c and we can also say f of x is approximately f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c um, and the approximation is better and better when x is roughly equal to c if we were trying to extend this out from 3 to like 300 i wouldn't really trust the tangent line much at all but it would still be the best thing i could do given the information that i had another way to think of it that's sometimes handy although not as useful for doing desmos uh, for example would be l of c plus h which is f of c plus f prime of c times well h is the distance from c to whatever new x value i have so i could call that h or you could say l of c plus delta x is f of c plus f prime of c times delta x and that's just our prediction equation from way back there so it's basically just doing linear predictions in little tiny time steps so on the homework there's problems like this where you're given the position and the um, slope at a certain point and you just use the tangent line to make a prediction sometimes those go backwards and then sometimes the whole problem is turned backwards where you're given a point and another point and asked what the um, what the derivative is there and in one sense you could just do all this logic backwards in another sense you could just think oh i have two points i'll just do a backward difference quotient or forward difference quotient whichever uh, is kind of my current point and my other point